I'm excited about uh, what God's going to do in this uh, upcoming election. Amen. Because if we put an expectation that he's hovering and brooding, then he is bringing about change. I don't necessarily feel led to call the exact change, uh, change in, except for in certain areas that he's given me instruction to. Um, you know, but I have called the change that would bring about repentance and the change that would bring about, um, you know, a different view that would come up against um, all the propaganda and the junk that's out there. Hover and brood. And also, when you hover and brood, what it ends up doing is it stirs up the junk, like I said, you know, like a sewer. <laughs> Stuff starts floating, <laughs> you know. Um, but it makes it really clear and obvious like, oh, I did not see that in behind the scenes. That's what was going on the whole time. Thank you for showing me that gross thing. Right? I didn't know that it was that gross or that much or that thing, you know? <laughs> so there's something about that. And, you know, and he uh, had said through uh, that word picture prophecy that uh, my husband had spoke about the water moving and you know removing the silt and things like that and so when when you do that it makes clearer what the original plan was supposed to be you know like i think it's getting clearer to a lot of people that are researching in this hour hey where did we come from how did this nation start what is this supposed to operate like that well we didn't know your operate like we didn't know that there's a lot of things that um, through the Ministry of Faith and Freedom, we now know how gov governmental things work that we didn't know before. While the stirring is going on and you're like, well, hold on a second, then everything needs to readjust to the original plan and how this is supposed to go, right? But you won't, you won't be able to have those boundaries unless um, there's a stirring and get the junk out of the sewer and then you were able to look and go, oh, the original plan was covered up. Now let's bring that forward. So the prayer of hovering and brooding is so, so powerful. And I wanted to share it from the aspect of, you know, like I take uh, Mission 61, for instance. People that um, are able to be a part of Mission 61 are not less. They're not, um, you know, dumb. They're not all, all those things that, you know, because you go through a crisis, sometimes people will label you just because you went through a crisis. Right? It's like, what? A lot of them are survivors of war. I'm talking spiritual wars. I'm talking, you know, family, all that stuff, addiction. And, and so we have that going on. And, and um, at the same time, I just want you to know my view of the hovering brooding when you pray for Mission 61 and you're, you're helping that stirring to happen is literally when I invite a new person in that's coming out of a crisis, they're in the midst of all hell breaking loose on their life, right? Yeah. So the first thing to do to help anybody is get them to safety first. Safety emotionally, safety financially, safe, whatever their, their lack is, whatever's chasing them, you get them to safety first. And then there's a structure that comes around that that brings a peace to it. And then God hovers and broods. And we could look at it, well, then it helps that person. Oh, no. The vision of Mission 61 is to rebuild the ancient ruins. So the things that have been generational, that have brought this moment to pass, we're now messing around with. You ever think of it like that? It's, it's kind of like you go to minister to somebody and then you spiritually adopt them. You're messing around with generations of demonic, right? And the blessing all kind of mumbled together and you're trying to bring the, the blessing forward and they're in a war that maybe they're not equipped to do or they've been in too long and they're wore out and um, they just need safety first and then they need people to come alongside of them and get in that war with them and say no to it. Hovering and brooding does that. So we're praying right now. Uh, we got a few rooms open, um, but a lot of calls have come in that the right people come into to the homes. And I actually had someone talk to me about this and they said, well, you wouldn't want to take somebody who has this wrong and that wrong and the other thing wrong, um, you know, because that could be so upsetting. 
And it's like, then what's the point of Mission 61? It's to bring deliverance. Now, just because it's under the umbrella of Mission 61 doesn't mean like, and that's where those people go. Anybody you encounter, anybody needs to be set free and rebuilt from the generational stuff that has come down. Anybody. It's just we have a housing that helps people get to that safety first. All right, so anyone we minister here, people walk through the doors. There's a hovering and the brooding that they thought they were just coming to church. You might have just thought even this morning, you're just here. Oh, no, we pray the hovering and the brooding. It's going to mess with your whole world. If you want it to stay the same, leave now. <laughs> um, but if not, it's going to start going, Woof, you know, there's this movement of the sphere of his rule and his domain. It's explosive. And that um, type of movement is the cleaning out the cistern cleaning out the waters, making things better. That's why it usually gets worse before it's better. Yeah? How many of you experienced that? Yeah. There's a big part, though, you were like, yeah. I came in and, and the Lord directed me to this church and I, I, I'm safe. Okay, well, now you're safe enough to work on it. Yeah. Because when we're not safe, we're on the run and we're working harder on surviving than we're working on healing. We're working harder on surviving than we are addressing it. So I want to encourage you. I just use Mission 61 as an example. But I don't, if you have a Bible study, you say, I feel the Lord's leading me to have a Bible study. Okay. There's a hovering and brooding that needs to take place. Or you just have a lo logical get-together with crumpets and tea. That's totally different. But if you're having a Bible study where you want to get to know Christ and you pray the hovering and the brooding of the Holy Spirit, whoever walks into your house has now encountered that movement. That's why many times um, I'll be talking to a person and um, I'm nobody great, but I pray this all the time, right? So, so um, they'll just walk, you know, this is my name and I know you don't know me, but I just wanted to see if I could set up an appointment and I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know why I'm crying. Okay, that's healthy, because I know why you're crying. You're encountering the Spirit of God, and you were going to do something logical to set up a logical thing, and all of a sudden you got swept into something bigger than logic. And we haven't even done anything yet. Yeah? Yeah. So Acts chapter 2, of course, we should well know this chapter. Um, these were the chapters that uh, my, my children had gone to a private school because there was so much gang stuff going on and, and uh, I don't know, all kinds of stuff was happening in the schools in Colorado. And, and then they were never told not to read the book of Acts <laughs> until they went to the private school. And, they're like, and they literally were saying, no, we don't go in that book. That can cause a lot of, you know, controversy and trouble. <laughs> it's almost like saying, you get close to that, now you're going to have some hovering and brooding. And we don't want that here. This, this is enough. We'll just learn about Moses, okay? <laughs> so, when the day of Pentecost, this verse 1, had come, and they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing, violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. The whole house the whole house. So we many times will focus on the people because they got the baptism. But I mean, the whole house was affected. So you might be sitting there full of Holy Ghost. Like I said, and you have a Bible study, not a logical study with tea and crumpets, a Bible study where you're talking about the Holy Spirit and, and the word and those are combined. And, um, and, and so when God moves in that, he's taken up the whole space. It's just not you. Have, trying to convey this. It's like, you pray this, like, there's nothing in the house that hasn't been touched. Right? Like a rushing, violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. As each person, as Calvin says, got lit. 
right? So if you hear that phrase, I'm lit, you know, it would look like fire. It's like explosive. And they were filled, that is diffused throughout their beings. Uh, Pastor and I have talked a lot about how the Amplified lays that out. You know, when something diffuses, it fills, um, it, it creates, sometimes um, it'll create a, like perfume can diffuse throughout a place. It creates a real strong smell, right? Um, and the fire like that, first it rested on them as they received the Holy Spirit, but then diffused them throughout their being. So the same way Holy Spirit filled the whole house, he also now filled the whole temple. Yeah? These were followers of Christ. And some would say, well, they already had the Holy Spirit or they already had, you know, God in them is what people will say. So they shouldn't have felt such a big deal. Well, at this day and hour, Holy Spirit has now come. And he's showing how he liked to operate uh, all, all the time. Let me take up your whole house. Let me move into your whole temple. In fact, I'll come up on you. That way we got the outside and the inside covered. So if you think about your prayers for the lost or your family members, you will be saved and your whole house. And I haven't looked it up yet, but the word house, I heard someone else share on that, and they said that can indicate generations, like your whole household. Back this way, down that way, right? Um, it's catching grandpa at the same time the newborn's coming in. Because he operates like that when, when he comes in, there's a hovering and a brooding. It's, dy uh, it's dynamos or uh, power um, that comes in and fills everything. And so if you think about it like an oil, because we refer to his operation like an oil or a wind or a fire or water, I mean, those types of things. But if you look at it like oil, Holy Spirit um, rubs on us like salve when he comes up on us. Scripture indicates that. It's like a salve that fills in every little crack and dry areas and like whoo, we're filled. And there's a, a fresh filling. When we get together, it's like, ooh, let me have that again. That's wonderful. Um, but at the same time, if you've ever put oil in a pan and you stick it in the middle of the pan, you can't say, don't go to the other edges of the pan. Just stay there. I put it in the middle, but it keeps running all over the place. You invite Holy Spirit in, he fills the whole pan. He fills the whole temple. He fills the whole house. So if you have uh, a mindset that, you know, maybe somebody's here and all of a sudden they're just like manifesting something demonic or they got an attitude, you know, uh, or whatever, we would somehow then feel like, well, the Spirit of God's moving over here, but not so much over here where they're sitting. Oh, and he's over here, but not so much over there. Think about this. If we pray, hover, and brood... That person who's in that attitude is the one being the most affected because this is comfortable to us. It's comfortable to be in that spot. So it isn't, um, it isn't where the Holy Spirit's kind of moving around to who, no, when he hovers and broods, it's like the rain. It rains on the just and the unjust. Right? And so there's, there's an operation that happens in that. When I'm receiving grace and the room fills with grace, oh, <sighs> grace is here for you. If that healing anointing comes in a stronger way, that's an oil that is here covering everybody. So the only thing you can do is receive or resist. So when you think about it. The power that we're walking. This is why, as an evangelist, or I think it was Randy Mitchell who was talking to him, and he runs with the underground church in China, and that guy's a preaching machine. And he, uh, anyways, he, very brave, and he teaches the pastors over there. But he was talking about, he said, you, you don't want to just be, you know, willy-nilly and walk into a room that's all unsaved, and you are there by yourself. 
He says, don't set it up like that. At least have a team of believers because you're praying the hovering and the brooding of the spirit and you're, you're surrounding and calling that in. And then God will just take care of the rest. But you go in there willy-nilly and you're not exuding the anointing, there's more of that than there is you then because we haven't invited him in that way. But you can, walk, you know, think about Brother Wigglesworth. You can be on a bus or a train or whatever and just stand up and say, hey, no one's asked the blessing over their food. I think it was on a train. You know, no one's asked the blessing. Everyone's like, what? You know, power of God falls. Why? Because he's already prayed up and is exuding everything that's taken up on the inside of him right? And he's saying, me and all these people will be included in this. I and all these people, you know, saved uh, person and all those are unsaved are going to get caught up in this. So let's pray the blessing over the food. And the power of God falls. Healings took place. All, I mean, falls. You got to read up on it. I mean, one, he did this several times. But one of the stories, people fell out. They don't even know to fall out. They're unsaved people. How would they know to fall out? See, so Holy Spirit wants to take up the whole space. And he's doing a miss power. So we're walking in dynamite, right? Mm -hmm. But you can be carrying dynamite and not have the fuse lit. So they, see how it said it here. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing, violent wind. Whew, he shows up. And it fills the whole house. You ain't getting out of this. Like, there's no place to run in that house. Whew, fills the whole house. Uh, there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them. And they rested on each one of them as each person received. It was like, whew, and they were like, yeah, I received that. I received that. And one at a time, boom, boom, boom. They got lit. Right? So dynamite here. As they received, the dynamite went in. You know how they, they, they do where they'll drill the hole? And then they stick the dynamite in there. And then you light it and run like my father and his friends would do. They stick it underneath the rocks and then stand on top of the rocks to see if it would lift them. <laughs> you got to know a little bit about dynamite. I've never done it, so don't look at me like I did it. He did it. Um, so, um, so the thing is, your, your um, I don't even know what it's called, your wick. No, it's a fuse. fuse. There we go. Um, has to be lit has to be lit. And that went, so he comes in, he's taken up the whole thing. And for this to get dynamite power explosive, you have to allow even your mind to get out of the way. And then, it takes a little bit sometimes, all of a sudden, but boom, right? And what it does is it sets us, all that old um, rock inside of us, hardness, any wickedness, any set in my ways has now been interrupted. Because if you logically serve God only, you know, and you don't know the Holy Spirit, and it's like, well, here's the rules. That's kind of how it ends up being when you're serving religion. Here's the rules. We got to stick to the rules. Even if you change something you make a new rule about it it's all about the rules and it becomes almost like a, a law right but we've been set free from the curse of the law what well, doesn't mean we're out doing you know who knows what we're still following the spirit who now lives in us but it breaks that dunamis power just goes poof and breaks apart all of the stuff we used to believe and it makes you re-question everything you're like what I did not know this. How does this affect? Am I even living right? I mean, it will start doing that when Holy Spirit comes on you. That's why when we lead someone to Christ, which I'm hoping you're all doing that, right? Working on somebody, whatever. Holy Spirit is the one softening the heart. But at the same time, you know, we're looking for that drill hole 
right here so we can put the dynamite in. It's never, oh, there you got saved and walk off. As Christians who believe in the Holy Spirit, it should be, do you want the baptism of the Spirit also? Like we can do that too right now. Should be like follow up because we want the whole space in everything taken up so that they're walking in this anointing that they're going to take to them and their whole household. So that's what happened to me in 1981. Um, I don't remember if it was like got saved and then the next night or something like that. I mean, there was so many people getting saved. We just got in a big circle and and received the baptism. Whew. It wasn't like, you know, you're doing a thing and now you feel better because you did that thing. No. It was space got taken up. It was now I'm walking in this thing. And then when we came home, whew, it was explosive on our household. We had an individual in the house that really didn't necessarily want God. And my brother gets out of the car closes the car door. Of course, the revival is going on until 1, 2 in the morning, so we just got home, and, uh, and we're praying in the Spirit, me and my brother Joe, and he just starts singing in the Spirit. We're out in the yard. We're on a farm, you know, so um, all of a sudden, blankety, blank, 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 be quiet. We didn't know it. We didn't, we didn't know we were carrying something and now we're moving it into, we're moving him into the household. We're carriers. And all of a sudden it disrupts everything. Everything just was like, what happened? And the war was so real in the spirit realm, but we didn't understand it. You know, uh, but we were so stinking filled that it was almost like, wow, you know, wonder why that person's mad. And you just keep going. It wasn't like a fight between us broke out, which would have been in the past. And it was like, you be quiet. No, you be quiet. You know, that kind of stuff. Come on then. You know, um, it, we, that wasn't even an option. We were so caught away in God, in the whole space. <sighs> I probably was in every prayer line possible for the first year of my salvation. Because he was working on me. Because I wanted him in the whole space. So it was like, just give me a sec here. Because, yeah, I'll repent of that. And then, yeah, I, I've got bitterness. And, I, I mean, it was like, poof, poof. you know, first I'd go in the prayer lines crying. After a while, I started to realize this is deliverance. I got some teaching into me. And it was like, oh, yeah, I want me some of that. And I get up there. I wanted the whole space taken up. See that? So um, when you have a conversation with somebody that, may, you know, maybe the tongues didn't manifest right away or still haven't, or maybe you only had a couple words or whatever, it doesn't mean that the whole space wasn't affected. I just want to encourage you on that. If you're still working on that area, you're still going before God or whatever. When you get the baptism, you know it because you feel like, oh, he's here. I'm lit. Watch out. I got dunamis power. Watch out. I could explode on all kinds of stuff. Just by showing up, you're bringing this same power that comes from the same spirit that raised our Christ from the dead. So what is in this dunamis power is resurrection and life. Well, then why isn't everyone happy about it when you bring that into the space? You know, my own family members should have been like, yay, they're home. They're just bringing such love, you know. <laughs> no, it was like, shut up and leave us alone, you know. So I was, oh, you know. And then it just got worse from there. The abuse went higher instead of going lower. And then we began to see things that we did not see before. Um, quickly had a Bible study. Some of us, you know, probably was set up by the church, got to get the new Christians, you know, going here. So we, we just did a Bible study right on the farm because 
you come in from chores or whatever, hurry, take a shower, boom, you're there. We didn't have time to be going places, so they brought the Bible study to us. And I, I had my, I'm coming off of Aerosmith and Black Sabbath and Ted Nugent, and and the guy says, you want to <laughs> you wanna, uh, do some praise songs? So I'm like, I don't know, I, you know. And I, I remember sitting down and just three chords, I'm trying to figure out. I'll just use three chords because I don't know how this goes, right? And... Uh, but I, I would do some little praise songs that they had, or little, uh, they're like a five sentence praise songs that they used to have, right? And you'd sing those over and over. And I remember sitting in our dining room, which had been here, and you could see out, like we had a big opening here, and you could see out into what we called like our great room. And I'm getting ready to praise or whatever, and somebody walks by and they say, should we invite that guy that's in the, in the great room and I say ah and I look up and I see him we all saw him but it was a spirit one we lived in a hundred year old farmhouse that had some nasty stuff but here's Holy Spirit this thing would have been lurking around in our house for how long right but you don't know that it's there till till the sewer gets stirring <laughs> and the junk comes to the surface and all of a sudden, I remember looking up and saying, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I just felt like the back of my neck, just like the hair stood up on the back of my neck. And the Bible study leader was like, Whoa. and the guy went in there and he felt like he was crazy because we all saw him and he wasn't there. Okay, so that's worse before it gets better. Right? But it's like, I thought you got saved, to get, you know, and your life should just be so wonderful. It is. We just are moving Holy Spirit into the whole space. So things that are sitting around there all of a sudden manifested. We had a lot of manifestations. Never saw a thing before that. But man, did it go down after the baptism. But if it's already there, wouldn't we want to fill that whole space even if there's a battle? Even if there's an announcement that needs to be made? And that Bible study leader made that announcement. We went into the room and we prayed. We never saw the person again. But I'll never forget the look. Just standing like the, just a look. And I was like, these things happened. And, um, you know, you had to be there. <laughs> you just saw him too. But at the same time, whatever that was, was very aware. Holy Spirit's in the house. What are we doing? So instead of approaching things, you know, uh, you know, we're like, he took up some of me, you know, and I'll carry that around. That'll be my comfort because he's the comforter and, you know, he convinces me of the word and these different things. No, I want the whole space. Top of my head, bottom of my feet, and everything that surrounds in this room. And when I go into the next room, whole space. Whole space. <sighs> now, the benefit of tongues is that Holy Spirit now is speaking through you and he's directing certain things. He can also speak to you right without the benefit without you actually speaking in tongues contrary to some popular belief because people have had that happen all the time it's just when you connect all those dots it's the most powerful right right so he wants the whole space there appeared to them tongues resembling fire which were distributed uh, among them and they were rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And they were filled, all filled, and they were all filled. That is diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit. And then they began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them. The, as the Spirit, he's got to get in there first, right? And he's giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and God-fearing men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound was heard, a crowd gathered, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing those in the upper room speaking in his own language or dialect. So it was almost like they were calling out to him. Holy Spirit was praying through them, calling out to them. Um, they were completely astonished, saying, look, 
Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own language or our native dialect? So um, not to get off into that, but at the same time, um, you can speak the dialect of, you know, maybe an East African man or something like that when the Holy Spirit prays through you. Otherwise, um, we pray a heavenly language. How many times? No one understands. That's why you need an interpretation. Yeah? But let's stand, because this morning, we want him taking up the whole space. The whole space. The whole space. And in government, the whole space. That's why we need Christians in government. That's why we need someone. Walk, it takes one. It takes one person. Walk into the government center, and you are there full of the Holy Ghost and fire. You are walking with ability, efficiency, and might. Ability, efficiency, and might just goes, whoo, it feels like the blessing. It feels like change. It feels like, whoa, this is, this is happening. Things get riled up. Accusations happen. Persecution happens. Why? Because somebody just entered the room. The more of that we can get, the more people we can get in those places full of the spirit of the living God. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. We're taking every opportunity. We'll pray for the election, right? So let's do that right now. We're going to pray in the spirit. Or in English, as he gives you what you're supposed to say. Either way, it's spiritual. In the whole space. In the whole space. In the whole space. God, we are asking that you don't just come in like softly seeping in. We are wanting the violent wind, the rushing violent wind in the name of Jesus. Lord, light it up. Light it up. Light us up. Light us up. If you're here and you, you would, you're saying, I want, um, or you're watching online, you're saying, I want the tongues to come alive in me. Now, some, some people have been praying two words and a little song for a long time, and that's powerful. But you're saying, I actually want to know more. I actually want to operate in a higher thing. Some are still waiting in that sense for the baptism. And, and, and really what it is is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many times we've been prayed over, you already have it. You already have him. He's in your space. So we're going to allow this morning just by faith to say, take up the whole thing. You can have my tongue. Just go ahead. Have my tongue. Have my tongue. Have my tongue. Just tell him, have my tongue. Well, you're like, I already, I already have the baptism. I don't you want more? Wouldn't you rather speak in more dialects? Wouldn't you rather have more powerful things, more avenues coming out of your mouth? I need more, Lord God. Light it up. Light this thing up in the name of Jesus. You said when we ask for a good gift, that's all you give us is a good gift because you're a good, good father. Jesus, you said it is, is expedient that I go because Holy Spirit comes. There's some of you that want to be free to sing in the spirit. And every time you go to do it, it just, it's not jiving. It's not, you, this is why we have to be diffused throughout our soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So anything up here between your ears that's in the way, take up the whole space, God. Take up the whole space between my ears, in my heart, all over. That's how we're doing, and we receive it by faith. Dunamis power. Dunamis power. Mighty, mighty, mighty rushing wind. Violent wind. We receive you. We receive you. We receive you. We receive you. Praise you, Lord God. You're holy. You're worthy. You're mighty. Praise, glory, and honor be to you.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here of a situation that needs some dynamite right now? That you need a breakthrough right now? If you do, come right up to the front. There's small explosions, and then there's deep-rooted explosions. You know, when we travel, we go through, it's always fun when you're on your motorcycle going through, uh, you know, things that are like the eye of the, the needle in South Dakota or whatever. Like, it goes through a, a mountain. It goes through, you know, you're like going through that. You're like, we're under uh, a mountain right now. It's so cool. You know, you're looking there, oh, we're right under. Well, some things that we need explosion power for are just like, we just need to make a little room over here, bust that up, and then we can move that out of the way. Other things, it's like, that's a mountain in the way. Uh. And sometimes God will say, we'll just move the mountain. You're going to need some dynamite power to do that. Huh? Praise you. Praise you. Now, let's have our prayer warriors come in behind, and we're going to agree, right? With everybody that's up here, that we're in a prayer of agreement. Now you've got fire with fire with fire with fire to light this thing. Yeah? How did they say, say it? You come boldly before the throne of grace in your hour of need. This is a bold thing. I mean, if I had to bust up a mountain today, I'd have to get some girth about me and be like, I'm just going to go blow a hole through a mountain today. I mean, you have to posse up to do something like that. And so we come boldly before the throne of grace because now we're, we're not just thinking about it. We're addressing it. We're not just asking. We're addressing it with dunamis power. 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 We accept the power you have given to address this thing. And we say unto that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. We do not doubt into our, in our heart. We shall have whatsoever thing we say in this moment with dunamis power. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. Break. 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 We pray the same thing in our government. Break, 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 break. Dunamis, power. Holy Spirit, you have the right through our voice. You have the right as we have invoked you. Do what you may. Blow it up. This is spiritual power. This is such spiritual power. Let's go there. Let's just go there. Let's just go. Act like you're blowing something up because we're not victims. We're not scared of the dynamite. Are we? No. Light it up. Light it up. Move it, move it, move it, move it. Kushi pepper at the ladder, I had an no so solo baba, your rosso sicate de brete de dia sugra, ratala yanada. Hover and brood over every mountain represented here, Holy Spirit. Hover and brood with your power. Oh, harda la harda se shete de dia sungro to mambara na nasala. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Today's the day to light the fuse. Today's the day to light it. Light it. Light it. Light it. Huha sholo horde la yare ne neha broto na si kusheti di prata la yurozo. Yorta la harra si shi. Anda kani anda la. Andi kale eto solo po barata la harra sa. Sounds like the upper room in here. Odo ko le karande le kasi de breche te de ba manana nana. Enda hurido su solo roto lo po bado brasi shi di. Ise de krese te de brete de broto lo po barata la manet. Urakala mamara dala yara salama doro sur do so sho sho lo lo bo koto manana ma. Praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you, 
Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 When you have a breakthrough, you see it in the spirit first, and then it manifests. I see it in my heart. Now manifest. Now manifest. Come forth, come forth, come forth in the name of Jesus. And they were baptized with the Spirit and fire. Fire, fire. This is your moment. This is your moment too. Like I said, tongues added to you. More language added to you. Language for the first time added to you. You don't do it. You're just saying, take up space, Lord. Take up the space. I yield. I yield. I yield. Diffuse me throughout my soul. Break through, Lord God. Break through anything that is unbelief or mistrust regarding you. Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, just, just take the hand of the person or put your hand on their shoulder, the person to the, the left and the right of you, and just say, I agree for your breakthrough. Because the prayer of agreement makes a difference. Now, 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 now fire. Now fire. Now fire. Now fire. In the name of Jesus, we want to see the victory, Lord God, in our spirits. We want to see that title deed. Show us, Lord God, um, the, the blueprint, like a new house. Show us what it looks like on blueprint and weld that into our hearts so we go, no, that's the picture. That's the picture. I'm not going with the other picture. I'm going with this picture, and this belongs to me. That's when you begin to make announcements to the spirit realm. See, you know, service is supposed to start, but here's the problem. It's like you want to get lit, and you go, go, you got a minute. <laughs> so let's make it a point as we go into praise and worship to not separate this thought right now. We're actually going to go into praise and worship. Whether we're praising or we're still praying, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no rule here. We could be praying in the Spirit while they're leading praise. Because it's like coming in the door and only going so far. No, come all the way to the altar. Come all the way to the altar within yourself. Thank you, Lord God, for the miracle you did with Ted's daughter yesterday. Lord, choosing a rollover for those of you who know Ted with no seatbelt on, this little girl. And they're sending her home, and she has bruises and a few cuts, and ta-da. <laughs> God is so good. He is so, so good to us. How many of you have heard the term to tarry on the Lord? I'm not a big believer on that as much as I am that I'm allowing myself, because he's here, his grace is poured out. Um, he's present where there's worship. There he is in the midst of us. I can just keep naming scriptures where we're not like, I'm waiting for him to come. And he's in you. The kingdom of God is in you. So who are we waiting on? When you tarry, who are you waiting on? Right here. 
because sometimes we'll be in a spot where we still can't see it. All the power is there, but I'm like, ah, I just, ah, and you're struggling within yourself. So the tarrying really is for you. It's not on him because you ask him for wisdom. He freely gives it to you. You ask him for his presence. His presence comes. You ask him to convict you. Boom, it happens. Isn't that wild? But there's that part where we, we tarry sometimes in praise and worship and we'll have that hang time in the spirit where we just wait. Whew, settle me, God. Settle me. Open me up to more of your kingdom. Ooh. And you just sit in that anointing and you sit in it and you sit in it. And then it'll seem like, oh, all of a sudden he appears. He was there the whole time. It's all of a sudden we have made an adjustment. So I encourage you to do that. That's really what uh, our prayer times and things are about, is us being in a spot where we're readying ourselves because we're asking him for the kingdom of heaven to manifest in the kingdom of God through on this. Where's the kingdom of God? Right here. I'm asking for heaven to fall down right here. Can I handle that? I better tarry a little bit and worship. Get myself ready because he's about to deposit a heavenly thing into all this. So I come into a spot where it's like, let me just tarry and, and get settled within myself. See what I mean? So get rid of the mindset of like, I'm just, I'm hoping and praying. I just wish you'd manifest. He's here. The spirit of God is here. The light of the world is already lit. We're not asking him to turn the light on. We're asking for us to come to a place where we can handle the light. Believe for the light. Make a change. Go ahead, Lisa.